Hi, my name is Lorraine Watry and welcome to my studio. I am a watercolor artist and I've worked with watercolor for 26 years now and I thought I would start a new series of videos where I go over different tips, tricks and techniques for working with watercolor and hopefully these short videos will help you in your journey and if you have a question or a technique that you would like to see please comment below and I will try to accommodate that in a future video. Hi, today's tip and trick video is going to be going over how to create uh, soft wispy clouds in a sky. So I am going to do the wet on wet technique and wet on wet means you are painting water, clear water, onto the paper and then painting color on top of it. But it can also be putting color on top of wet color. So the first one I am going to do, I will use some cobalt blue and I'm going to get my color out and I always try to get my color, I don't always remember, but I always try to get my color out before I start putting the clear water onto my paper because if you don't have your color out and you go to paint your water on the paper then by the time you get your paint out your uh, water that you've applied to the paper may already be drying and then you can run into issues. So I'm getting cobalt out and then I'm also going to get some uh, cerulean blue and the sky uh, will have the um, most vibrant color and darkest color toward the top of the sky and then as it goes down toward the horizon you uh, it starts to go a little more turquoisey and be lighter and that turquoisey blue um, is partly because of the atmosphere between yourself and the horizon so and then also that fact that it goes lighter is that same reason so I'm going to get those two colors out and I will use a mix of them. And I tend to use these two colors a lot when I'm doing skies. It really can depend on where you are and what sky colors you see a lot. But um, So those aren't the only colors. So for this technique I'm going to put clear water over the whole sky. And I'm just going to do this whole uh, rectangle as uh, the sky. I'm not going to worry about putting any land or anything in there. And if I were actually painting a sky, I might have a few marks on the paper here and there that would give me an idea of the line of the clouds, of where I might have um, some clouds. So for this, I'm, I'm just playing right now, basically. Alright, so I've applied the water and if it is really wet, really shiny, it is best to give it just a few seconds. And what you can do if you think it's to the point where it's ready to paint, and I do have my board tipped, and actually I'm going to tip it just a little bit more. Um, I usually tip my board about two to three inches when I'm painting so that the paint as it's, um, the water and the paint as they're um, moving down the paper will help uh, keep the color flowing and then also it can help with um, keeping any uh, back run of water so I don't know if that you're seeing that but it's kind of pooling the water is down at the bottom of the paper um, but so having the paper tipped will keep it from um, backing up and causing possibly causing a bloom okay so I've got um, cobalt on my brush and just touching it to the paper you can see how quickly it moves if it moves too fast or if you have a lot of water in your brush one of the things you can do is just take your towel and dry the back edge of your brush and that will take enough moisture off of there that maybe you won't be putting as much on your paper and I'm just kind of watching it I want a little bit of the shine to disperse to disappear I'm going to um, get a separate brush here and using a damp brush I can lift a little bit of the water at the bottom edge down here and that will help um, cause the paper to dry just a little more and uh, not hopefully cause a back run for me. Alright, so then I'm going to go back in. So now it's not moving as much. I'm going to leave some openings and I like uh, wispy clouds that have some angle to them. It just makes them feel more dramatic. 
when you have some diagonals in your painting. And then as I go down the paper, I'm going to grab a little of the cerulean blue so that I can vary the color as I come down toward the bottom. And then I'm going to go, um, actually I'll probably clean my brush just a little bit and get just a little water on it so that as I come down toward the bottom I can lighten the color. So that is a very quick way to do uh, clouds, wispy clouds in a sky scene. And um, I'm not working from an image today so it's more just the technique than the actual uh, sky. The other thing that you might have handy if you have a mop brush and this mop is a three-quarter inch uh, Royal Brand mop brush and it has real soft bristles. They're very um, spread out and I think they're goat hair so they're, they just um, are very uh, soft. So if there are any wispy areas that you are not liking, um, depending on how much it moved in the water, you can come in with the mop, but generally you want to wait until uh, a little of the shine of your paper is dispersed, it's gone, because if you do it too quickly, then when you're brushing over it, and I'm using this dry, it can um, cause hard uh, dark edges to appear if it's too wet when you're doing this. And I'm just gently, like barely um, whispering over this surface to um, cause some of those edges to um, basically blend back in. So it's, it's creating, or not creating, it is um, causing the wetter area and the drier area to sort of blend together. And then I do notice down here at the bottom I have a few places where it's just a little wet still. And so I'm going to use my brush just barely. It's got any, it doesn't have any moisture on it because I'm drying it with my towel. And I am just going back and lifting that just a little bit so that I don't have a background happen. So that is one way to create a um, wispy look of clouds in your sky. And I also said wet on wet can be done with color on top of color. So the first thing I'm going to do is to place some water down. For this one I'm going to give it the look of a little bit of some um, sunrise or sunset color in the sky. And so I'm getting out quinacridone rose and I'm going to get out some of my Hansa Yellow Light to make a peach. And I will probably leave just a little bit of some white peeking through here and there. So now that I have those colors, I will get water. Paint the water on, and I have the cerulean blue out still, and that is the other color that I will be using. So for this technique, I'm going to start with my sun, sunrise, I'll say it's a sunrise, sunrise colors of my quinacridone rose and the Hansa yellow light. Get just a little more of the Hansa out. And I'm going to use it a little on the uh, rosier side toward the top of the sky and then as I'm coming down so this is not moving very much which is good so I didn't even think to look this time and then as I'm coming down I'm going to switch to a little more of the uh, yellow more of the hands of yellow light and if you have um, color on your paper, as long as you're working with a little bit of some speed, then you should be able to go back and add some color here and there. And the other thing is to uh, be careful of how uh, much water is on your brush. So if I go back into this and had a lot of water, it could cause a bloom. So I'm going to dry the back of my brush and then I have the ability to go back in and add a little color here and there if I want to. Now while that is still damp, 
I am actually going to go down. I want to add a little more down here first, a little orangier, less of the white. And then I'm going to go over to my cerulean and get some of that with just a little bit of the Quin Rose in it. So I don't want a lot. And I want to make it look like there's some darker areas in this sky. And so I can come over that wet color and it blends just a little bit. It gives some um, variety to the look of the sky. I do have to be careful as I come down because the yellow down here, I could start having the look of green in the mix. So I'm adding a little more of the Quinn Rose and as your sky goes toward the horizon, the clouds actually get closer together and they start to flatten out. And that will give it the feeling of depth. So if this were my land down here, then my clouds at the bottom should be closer together and um, flatter. They wouldn't um, have as much space between them. And I think I want to darken this upper corner just to have a little bit more um, depth in the painting. And so you can see that wet on wet can be done over clear water, but it can also be done over um, an area that already has color on it. So it is a matter of controlling how much water is in your brush and how much water is on in your pigment over here and then also on the paper. And some of that is just doing it and playing and learning what to look for. So I hope you enjoyed seeing these um, skies with some wispy clouds uh, appear and that uh, if you have a question on uh, some tip or trick or technique having to do with watercolor if you'll comment below and I will try to work that into a future video and I hope you have a good day. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you soon. Bye!